It's Ireland, you know, it's, we're known as such a Catholic country. So I, I think it, it's that, it's that's what interests people, that a country which has been so conservative and so Catholic could become quite liberal and uh, quite forward-thinking in its agenda. So it follows the course of one man, Cyril Avery, uh, through the course of his life. He's gay, um, how he comes to terms with that, how he lives with that in a society where until the 1990s homosexuality was still illegal. You know, people today, you know, everybody has friends who are gay, you know, that's family members who are gay, and um, it's not such an unusual thing. Uh, but in those days it was, of course, because nobody would come out, nobody could come out. It was illegal. Um, you would probably lose your job, you would certainly lose your family. So, you know, the idea of somebody actually declaring themselves to be gay would have been, uh, you know, quite extraordinary. You know, I went to a Catholic school run by priests, and if that subject would come up, I mean, it would be, you're going to hell. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not surprising that for so many generations, people just didn't come out at all. It was, um, you know, people were just closeted because they were terrified. Um, and even though I was kind of at the tail end of all of that in terms of when I was born, um, it was still, it, it was still quite a scary thing. I think I came out when I was about sort of 21, 22. Um, but, you know, as a teenager, you're, you still want some, you know, and you go looking for it. Um, but you're terrified of anybody finding out, you know, and um, Dublin being such a small city. And there was only one real kind of gay bar in Dublin. And um, it was, it's presented in, or it was presented in quite a unpleasant way with darkened out windows and everything so that it felt like, it was something wrong, something, you know, um, something terrible. And it takes you a while to get over those feelings. You know, it, it takes you a while to feel that um, there's nothing wrong, nothing shameful about what you're doing. I was there in the country during the referendum and it was a pretty horrific experience as I expected it would be because it felt like going back to being a teenager again where you had all these people on radio, on television, in the newspapers you know, rabbiting on with their stupid opinions that nobody asked them for really, and about people that they don't know and that they have no relationship with, and feeling that they have some right to, to judge them and decide upon how they should live their lives. It, what it shows you is it's still out there. You know, before that, it felt like everything was fine, nobody cares anymore. But actually, if the referendum taught me anything, it taught me that people do, people do care. There is still quite a lot of homophobia out there, but really in the, in the tide of history, it's, it's coming to an end. You know, there would still be some people out there, I would imagine today, but I just think, you know, time is moving on. They just don't really, there's no effort to talk about it anymore. <laughs>